Good morning. On behalf of the Alliance of Women and Workers' Compensation, I want to welcome you to today's webinar. Today's webinar is entitled Leading Through Change, a topic that applies to all of us. This live panel is being broadcast today, February 23rd, 2023. Before we get started, I would like to thank our 2023 corporate sponsors for their support on hosting events such as this. They support us not because they want their logos up on a screen, but because they support the cause, which is to affect positive change in the workers' compensation industry through networking, supporting, mentoring, and collaboration. The Alliance is inclusive of all professionals in the workers' compensation industry, regardless of career stage, with the belief that we can all learn from and support each other. Our theme this year is Together Towards Tomorrow. Be sure to head to the Alliance website for all upcoming events. We are excited to be hosting webinars, collaboration sessions, and in-person events throughout 2023. Be sure to check back on the website for registration details. And if you cannot make one of our virtual or in-person events, don't worry. All events will be recorded and on demand for followers. The Alliance grew so much last year as we launched several new chapters. Be sure to connect with your local ambassador for upcoming events to kick off your year with the Alliance. If you would like more details on the Ambassador Program, check out the replay of our January panel where we highlighted the plan for 2023. Change is preceded by trust. It is through acceptance and inclusion that trust will be formed and positive impact will occur. The Alliance is committed to creating a safe space in the workers' compensation industry for women of diverse backgrounds and experiences through a shared culture that integrates various perspectives. This is who we are and who we will be. The time to do better and be better is now. The Alliance understands that diversity is a journey that will take time to make meaningful changes for our organization, its followers, and supporters. We will be intentional in making progress along our key pillars of change. Turning to today's webinar, change is inevitable, but our reactions are what impact us professionally and personally. Top leaders today need to think about how they handle and adapt to change as well as how to manage people through it. Whether you are a people leader or working on your own professional growth, you will have tangible takeaways from this session about how to manage and to be managed through change. Our panelists today include Faith Mason, Vice President of Strategic Analytics with Arch Insurance, Kelly Euler, Senior Director, Insurable Risk at Walgreens Boots Alliance, and Aunt Andrea Adams, CEO, Founder and President of Advanced Disability Management. As this is a live session, please comment and ask questions using the chat feature on your screen. We would love for you to engage with your fellow members and speakers during this session. We love seeing that interaction. Thank you for the time you're spending with us today, and we truly hope you enjoy this webinar. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today, not only because uh, I'm very excited about the topic in general, but this is our first live panel of 2023. So definitely get those questions in. The chat is live. I see that there's uh, already some a little engagement in there. So definitely ask questions throughout and happy to, to take a look at those as we're going through the, the topic today. So my name is Lori Fry, and today's topic I personally am very excited about because as I said in the video to start, this is a topic that affects all of us. It does not matter if you're a people leader, if you are someone who wants to be a people leader or comfortable in your role, but you're being managed, everyone goes through change. So it is definitely a topic that is going to resonate with everyone. So I'm excited to get to it with our panelists. So let's start with some introductions. So Andrea, could you go first and let the group know who you are? Oh, yes. Thank you, Lori, so much for having me today. I'm excited as well about this topic. My name is Andrea Adams. I'm from Advanced Disability Management, where we supply disability management services to the workers' comp arena. I've been in this position for a number of years, and it happened to be fanatic about workers' comp. You know, I think it's one of the few industries that can really relate to people and really help people when, when they're in a time of need. So thank you very much. Of course. Yes. Thank you for joining. Kelly, how about you? Hi, everyone. Thanks, Lori, for having me. Uh, Kelly Euler, Senior Director of Insurable Risk for Walgreens Boots Alliance. Most people in the U.S. know that as Walgreens. I've been there for five years, but really been in risk management, insurance, and claims for my entire career. I did not start out in workers' comp, but did take over workers' comp for a prior employer in 2008, 
and am constantly learning from my team. I would say as far as um, change goes in this topic, I think I have a lot of experience in it. A lot of the, the companies I've worked for have gone through major changes. So I'm excited to talk about it today. Great. And Faith, how about you? Lori, thanks, uh, thanks like everybody else for having me here. I'm excited to talk about the topic. I'm Faith Mason, the VP of Strategic Analytics for Arch Insurance. And I've been in the industry for, oh God, I don't want to date myself, but all close to 20 years. And uh, I'm a workers' compensation geek. It is just kind of who I am at my core. I didn't realize it when I graduated from college, but that's where I fell and that's where I happily landed, I guess I should say. Um, I have gone from being an adjuster all the way up to managing a workers' compensation program. So excited to talk about all the different change that has gone on in my life through, through that journey and how I've helped people kind of manage through it. Great. Yeah. And I think that, that that's a key to not only personally and professionally have all of us, everyone on the call gone through change. Work comp is an ever-changing industry, more so than I think a lot of others. So this would be a perfect topic for our, for our members. So, so let's get started. Let's just jump right in. So in particular, I kind of want to talk to you three, not only about how you've led through change yourselves, but also how you have self-assessed and self-managed yourselves as well. Because we know not everyone joining the call today is a people leader. And so not only those tangible takeaways for leadership, but also just in general for your own self-growth and development, how can we uh, manage through something that we all deal with? So to start, how do you show up for either your team as a people leader or your peers around you when you are, when your company is going through change or even when you were just personally going through some change? And Kelly, let's start with you on that one. Sure. So um, my approach is always to be as honest and transparent as I can be as a leader. Sometimes leader, leaders know things that other people don't and eventually they will, but there might be some legal reasons or or otherwise where maybe you can't share, but um, I just try to be as honest and transparent as possible without you know, giving away anything I'm not allowed to say. I usually try to focus on the benefits of the change, but also want to acknowledge everyone's feelings. Sometimes that's all people really need in order to get comfortable is just to talk through or vent or just have someone acknowledge their fear of this change or um, whatever it might be. So <clears throat> that's my, my leadership approach generally is just to be um, myself and hope that people feel comfortable with talking with, with me about their fears about the change or concerns so that we can work through it and talk through it. Yeah, that's great. I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, that open door or, you know, that transparency is, is huge when big changes are coming for a company. Faith, how about you? I saw you nodding along. So <laughs> I was, I was saying, you know, Kelly stole my answer. It's all about, you know, transparency and honesty to the extent that you can be, because there are sometimes as a leader, things that you can't share for, for various reasons. And I don't think it's anything wrong with acknowledging that to the folks like, Hey, there's things that are going on. There's some things that I can share with you. And then there are other things that I can. And when I'm able, I will absolutely share that with you. Uh, for me, one of the big things, especially as a, you know, as a people leader was making sure that I was showing up for the folks the way that they needed me to show up for them. I think a lot of times um, managers or people leaders get into the one size fits all rule for how you manage a group. And that really is going to be detrimental to your management style, right? I remember the worst advice I was ever given when I became a new manager was not to manage to personality when that is absolutely the worst thing that you can do. You have to manage to personality because what one person needs is not what another person needs. So I remember from my former team, you know, one person needed me to just let them sit off in their corner and come to me when they were ready to discuss whatever was going on with them, whether it was personal or it was company related. And then another person just simply needed to vent, right? As soon as the information came available, she was going to be in my office for at least the 45 minutes. And I knew to keep it available for her because I knew that that was what she needed in order to get over what the initial anxiety in relation to the change, not so much the change itself, just the, the uncomfortableness of knowing that the change is coming, right? Because as humans, we're so used to our routines. Mm -hmm. And as soon as something gets out of that routine, it just creates all these things inside of us. And she was just one of those people who needed to vent. So I just sat there and let her vent. 
And then we were like, I'm like, do you need a coffee now? Let's go get a coffee and we can talk about the plan to get you through so there aren't as, in, as many interruptions through the process. So, you know, as a good leader, transparency, honesty, and sometimes it's just being a listener. Something else you said actually resonates with me personally because it's something I struggle with, but it's something that I think not only for a, a non-people leader, but also a people leader, because we're probably all, you know, everyone's still reporting up to someone for the most part remembering that not all the details can be shared. And I know that that personally for me makes me kind of angry and stressed out, but remembering, especially if you have that respect for your leadership, like you, you know, Kelly and Faith, you just said about knowing your leader has that open door. They're going to tell you what they can tell you. So if they're not, there's a reason and remembering that and not using that as a way to, you know, personally get a little, a little feisty about things. So I think that's a really great call out as well. How about you, Andrea? What are some ways that you can show up for either your team or your peers? Yeah, both Kelly and Faith, all of you raised such valid points and the transparency is is crucial. But I also think that we, you know, we as watching changes being implemented, that we know that they're going to happen. We know that they're going to be inevitable. And I think having a positive attitude towards the change as, as a leader and as a person can really impact how the change is going to be implemented. So when it comes time to, you know, staying positive or during the changes to actually just start breaking down for me and analyzing, okay, these are going to be the benefits of the change that I can see that are going to impact everybody on the team. And, and it may be the impact is a little different for each person. Mm -hmm. So like you ladies were suggesting as well, it's like, you have to have that open door, that open communication, sharing the points and the information, answering questions about how is this change going to, to affect me and how is this going to affect my job and, and what I do. So when you start to look at the bigger picture and then start unpacking it, how it's going to impact each and every person and then listening to them, answering their questions, it will help the development process of the change be implemented smoothly over, over a period of time. And then as you're able to release information at, at the appropriate time to each of the individuals, then it makes, I think it just puts cohesiveness within the team and lessens everybody's anxiety about, well, this is not going to be so bad. And I think by a leader having the positive attitude in from the very beginning, kind of sets the tone for how the change is going to be put into effect. Mm -hmm. And Andrea, I couldn't have asked, had a better answer to end to lead into my next question. I have notes to prove this was my next question. This was not planned, but I, I was going to ask, because I totally agree with you. How do, what are some sort of tangible tips or some for, for keeping that positive attitude? Because I know it's easier said than done. So I'll, I'll start with you on what are some ways that you do keep that positive attitude? Well, thank you. I, I think by nature, I'm kind of a half glass full type of, of person. So when I, um, I try to not to think of things of, of the negative way, but I try to look at the positive things that, that may come out. So again, it goes back to that analyzing, like what, how is this going to benefit of us, all of us together and working together? And how are we going to be able to make this happen as a team. And I think the most important thing is to answer the questions because not everyone really wants to see a change take place, take place. So, you know, well, why are we changing this? You know, why do we have to do it this way? It's worked this way for so long. What, what would be, you know, what, why, why do that? So I think by answering the why behind the change is happening and explaining to people this is why we're doing it. And this is the bigger picture, the bigger vision of, of what we're doing moving forward. It's gonna be a better place for the, for the company in its entirety. And believe it or not, it might be better for your position within the company, or it might even open a door for you that you may not have considered in terms of career mobility, or using a, a certain skill set that you, you may have that might, actually benefit you that you haven't thought about before. Yeah, I think that that's, that's great. A great way to look at it. And Faith, I'll go to you next. I was going to, part of the question I was going to ask too, is how do you help your team alleviate stress? And I think you already answered that by just letting them vent and then grabbing a coffee that always de-stresses me. But from the positive side, what are some ways that you're able to, to stay positive and optimistic and change? 
Sure. Um, I wish I was like Andrea. I wish I was the, the glass half full kind of a person. I think I'm more of a realist. So, um, but what I've done with my teams, because it is important for, and when you're in the leadership role to have that positive attitude so that you don't have some of those negative feelings impacting how the team's going to behave. Um, I've reminded them of the change that we've gone through and how positive that's been, right? So if you can kind of dial them back to a time where they were uncertain or they were anxious and say, you know, that was right when we were going through, you know, this acquisition or this change in philosophy or this change in process and look how we've come through, look at the benefits. So let's look at this change that's happening, whatever it, it's going to be as a way, as a positive, right? We've gotten through that. We were able to be resilient through it. We, um, we were able to be better on the opposite side of it. So I, I think to me, that's the most tangible way that I've been able to help the team move through the change outside of offering them a coffee or, you know, like whatever it is that gets them going <laughs> intrinsically. Yeah, I think that's a great point because obviously change is never the first time. So reminding, calling back to old change, that makes perfect sense. How about you, Kelly? How do you stay positive or show positivity to your team? Um, I try to use humor and just not taking myself too seriously. So, um, you know, we all work, every company we all work for, we know the the pros and cons of how how that company works. We know um, some processes that probably don't go so well and just acknowledging the bad with the good can make everybody feel like, okay, you know, we're not just, we all see the same thing. Now let's focus on what we can do to make it better. And I also, when I'm alleviating stress from my team, I try to think about deadlines and other things that I've asked them to do. And if they need additional time to work through the change, I try to soften deadlines um, or have more or less one-on-one -on -one conversations depending on what the individual needs. And um, yeah, just try to laugh with them. You know, let's figure out, okay, what can, what can we control? And let's focus on that because a lot of stress through change comes from feeling out of control. And so for me, focusing on what can we do, what can we control and how are we going to make the best of it? and then just making sure everybody's comfortable and also can be authentic with me. I don't want somebody to be afraid to tell me that, they, that they're stressed out or that they're afraid to tell me they need more time on a project or something because the change is impacting them. So um, that's a big part of it for me as well. I love the call out of potentially less one-on-ones. I think that everyone defaults to talking it through, but back to your point, Faith, not everyone responds the same way. So I think that that's great to have that recognition. And then Kelly, I'll, I'll start this next question with you as well. So for your team, what are some ways that an individual contributor, a non-people leader can stay positive or show up in a way that is really help support their manager? I what think would you like to see? What would support you? I mean, I think it's important for everyone to remember that change really is constant in our personal lives and at work, and that it is about a feeling of lack of control. So what I do when I feel sort of out of control is I devise a plan around what am I going to do um, going forward. And it might be, what am I going to do to talk myself off the ledge on a certain day? Or it might be, what am I going to do? related to work I need to do to, to work through the change. And I think everybody at all levels can, can do those two things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously people who are better at change management and, and working through it themselves alleviates stress from the manager because then there's less support. But, um, you know, that's, if, if somebody needs to talk to a manager, needs to talk to their leader, needs to talk to their mentor, they should do that too. Whatever they need, they should reach out. I think where sometimes people get in a place that's not good is when they don't say that they're stressed out. They don't say that they need help and they just try to work through it on their own and don't know how. So um, that's what I would suggest. Just make sure you're devising a plan for yourself. And if you don't know how to do that, then reach out and ask people who can help you do it. Yeah, makes sense. Faith, what are your thoughts? What are some ways that people on the team can show up, support their manager, support their other teammates? 
Sure. I was going to say a lot of what Kelly just said. I hate going after people. No, kidding. <laughs> um, it is all, and I'm going to steal something from Andrea as well, because it is about showing up with that positive attitude as well. So it is helpful for, you know, as a people leader for everyone on your team, not to be angry. Uh, so if you are the person like Andrea, who's the glass half full, please show up like that because it is super helpful. It's hard delivering very difficult change based messages to a group of people and everyone in there is like, I hate this, right? So if you are the person that's the smiler, please smile because that is that is very helpful. But from a more tangible perspective, it is always about the plan. What can we control within the change? So offer, you know, offer some suggestions like, hey, you're in this team as well. What's worked for us through change before? Um, what can we do that keeps us consistent and on target? And let's talk about it, be open and honest about how we're feeling. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. And hopefully as a manager, you're creating that environment where the, peop the, the people who are with you feel comfortable doing that, being able to say, you know, today's not a good day for me. I'm not going to be able to turn something in. And it's because of X, Y, and Z. Um, so that those are my those are my things or takeaways for the the people who aren't people leaders. Yeah, that's great. Even answering second, that's still a perfect answer. <laughs> Andrea, how about you? Oh, you guys gave excellent answers, and I I couldn't agree with both of you more. I have this system that I like to do. I I call it the five P's, and one of the things that I try to do is try to put myself into someone else's shoes as as things are 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 happening and unfolding. So I think the biggest thing for me to remember is to be patient and persistent, practical, positive, and have purpose, right? So as I um, think about how that change is going to impact others, I also think about how I would react if I were in that shoe, in those shoes. And so when, I, when I'm talking to our team, if they can show up sometimes with even three of the P's that I, that I like, it's just going to help me to be able to to help them through through a change that we all know is going to be you know inevitable or hard to put into place so patience and communication are pro probably the two biggest things for me because you know we can't do everything in one day so it's also good to know that you're you know if you have a plan and work towards that plan over a period of time then it's going to probably go a little bit smoother that's great. I love a I love a system. So appreciate the the five P's. So I do just want to give a chat reminder to everyone. I believe the chat is live. I have struggled with this in the past, so I could be wrong. Feel free to just send a test out there to let me just alleviate some stress. But if it isn't working, the Q and A always works. I can't mess that. Oh, thank you, Natasha. Love it. Okay, the chat is live. So feel free to to ask any questions. We can definitely get to those if you guys have any. Um, but with that, Andrea, I want to ask you in particular a specific question. So what are your thoughts on that the skills that a person should hone, either continue to develop or um, actually, sorry, I'm going to go back because we did get a chat question and I, I want to engage. So can you share the five P's again for Stacey? Oh, sure. I'd love to. So the five P's are patience, persistence, practical, you know, practicality of whatever your change is positive and purpose. Perfect. Love it. So for you, what are some, and actually, I guess within those, it kind of answers the question because there are some skills there, but what are your thoughts on skills for a person who is not great with change, either new skills they should try and develop, old skills they should take off the shelf and dust off and, and hone a little bit for someone who isn't great with change? What are some recommendations you have with, with skills related to that? Well, I think if you're if you're looking at yourself first and doing some self assessment, you know where where are you at? Where are you, you like in terms of your career? The change being implemented in a company. I mean, I think it can be kind of universal. So by assessing, you know, where you're starting and where you want to be, can you take some of those so some of those skills and do some self reflection and do and actually look inward to say, how am I going to handle this? How am I going to get from point A to point B and, and answer the questions honestly and openly? And like, I think Kelly was suggesting, use your mentors, you know, talk to your managers, be open and communicative, share your ideas, like understand where, where you're, where you're heading and how you're going to get there. And I think that 
the path that's that's always best is the path that the path that incorporates a lot of um question asking learning from people who have been there done that like faith was was talking about earlier you know we've been through this before we certainly can do it again and then start building on the skills that you feel a level of comfort with so whether that skill is um you know talking one on one talking within a group and and then i also think that just you know reading and understanding where you want to go with your the direction of your of whatever change that you're going through can also lend a lot of credence to your self assessment that great and a couple of things in there that um again i appreciate you setting this up on a t for me uh regarding mentors we actually have a, a webinar topic that's coming on april 6th about how not only to find your mentor but also how to utilize them and i think you you and kelly both hit that nail on the head that utilize them in these type of situations. This is exactly where a mentor comes in handy. So a little spoiler for the April April 6th webinar. Um, the other thing that you said that I think leads really nicely into a question I had for Faith is talking about the skills related to, um, you know, getting used to the change and just in resilience. I think we talk about resilience a lot when it comes to change, but sometimes, I mean, there's, there's a time to be resilient, but there's also a time to really self-reflect and figure out, is the change necessary or, or the right one for you? So Faith, I want to talk to you about that. How do you kind of make that determination when you keep being resilient as everyone is telling you to be, or you take that time to say, I don't think that this is going to work out? Okay. Um, so first, I would like to say, I think that sometimes resi resilience is an underutilized skill set today that folks... Um, see the first sight of something that makes them uncomfortable and they're like I'm I'm out of here and I do think you know especially with younger folks coming into the industry or less experienced folks those mentors are going to be great for you in these instances because they're going to be able to help you identify when something is a situation where it's just regular work discomfort or uncomfort and just being uncomfortable in a situation that's going to make you grow or it's a situation that is kind of rubbing up against your personal things that are going to be harmful for you, right? So that's when we make the decision versus it being a time to step in and be resilient and kind of stay the course versus when it's going to be a decision, say, you know what, this isn't right for me. And I always go with, you know, is it harmful for me in various ways, right? Is it impacting how I'm showing up at work? Is it impacting how I'm showing up at home? Is it causing me un weird, anxious, unnecessary feelings that are beyond what is what I would consider normal work discomfort or just a regular change, right? Like, yo, we acquired somebody, it's a big thing. How's that going to transform the work we're doing? That's not necessarily discomfort, right? Or that's just a, that's just a change that we have to work through. But there can be instances, and I'm gonna use one from my personal life because maybe the, an example is the best way, right? Um, I know a lot of us were all struggling with return to office, right? All the different companies had different ways that they were approaching it. Some of them were being very, I would say draconian, right? And it's like, these are the days, you come in five days a week. This is how we did it before COVID. And then you had other people who were on the opposite end of the spectrum and said, I don't care how you do it, just get your work done, right? Um, I'm a person who thinks there's some meshing in the middle that makes sense because to my earlier point about people not being the same, everyone needs something different. And I really learned that during the COVID um, experience being a people leader. So in my former company, they made a very hard and fast rule that at the time did not help me in the situation I was in as a caretaker for my mother. And it was a, it was, a, do, am I going to be resilient in this moment and work through it and figure out how maybe I can get another caretaker for my mom or not show up for her in a way that I have been showing up for her? Or am I going to stay at this job? See, so there, there's no resilience in that. That's a harm to me as a person, right? I wasn't going to be able to show up in my personal life the way that I needed to show up and the way that I wanted to show up. So you can't be resilient through that, right? You've got to make a decision. But I don't think managers can do that for you. But this is where I think mentors are very helpful, right? Someone who's outside of the situation who can say, how are you showing up at work? How are you showing up at home? Is this change too much for you? So that's kind of my, that's how I assess it. I think that's such a great answer. And I think um, obviously with, with your mother, it was such a, it's maybe not something everyone is having that clear cut of, of a um, 
example. It's not always going to be clear cut. For me, it happened to be. <laughs> but I do think you did mention something though that I, I think that resonate could resonate with everyone and myself personally is how are you showing up at work? Because that I, in my personal life with a, a job change was I was getting to a point where this is not who I am. Like I am someone who wants to be doing like all, like, and that's like, this is something is wrong. If this is not how I personally have want to be, then there's a change that needs to be made. So I do think that that's something to some self-awareness there that you mentioned as well. So I think that that's a fantastic takeaway for our, our members today. So I do want to go back to a question for all of you. So I'll go around the, the horn again. Um, what is some of the best advice you have gotten on this topic, leading through change or you know, managing yourself through change? And Kelly, I'll start with you. Some of the best advice I received is, um, as far as being a leader and how to lead people through change, is to treat every person as an individual and, and figure out what they need to help themselves through what, what they're going through. So if it's um, a personal change, let's say somebody's getting divorced or um, has an ill family member or something like that, what resources can I provide through HR in order to help them with that transition? Um, that's you know not something that I'm probably gonna be able to sit down with them every day and talk about for an hour, um, but certainly being empathetic to their situation. And if it's something related to work, um, figuring out what resources I can provide to the person to go out on their own and, and try to gain additional skills. So I would tell them, go, you know, go find your mentor. If they didn't have a mentor, I would help them find one. Um, but also um, look for like classes related to emotional intelligence. I know the Alliance does a lot of sessions on emotional intelligence, which I, which I think is really great because it is so important um, in the business world to, to have that skill. So um, that's what's worked for me and that it's worked for me personally, but the advice also helped me make sure that I was giving that advice to the, the people who've worked for me. Yeah, that's great. And thanks for the Alliance shout out also. Uh, Andrea, how about you? What advice, what's the best advice that you've received on this topic? I, I really believe the best advice I've ever received on is understanding what has changed. You know, like just the definition alone, like what does it actually mean? So, you know, I had, um, I had a manager tell me, we're, to understand what change is, it's mobilizing a group of people or something to, to redirect or a different direction. And so when you're thinking about that in the, in the, the big scheme of things, just understanding that it's inevitable and it's going to happen and that everybody goes through it. It's not just you being by yourself. And that's what Kelly was talking about, the mentors. And of course, you need to be able to rely on other people to help you get through the change, whether it's a personal change or a company change or what, and consider where you are within your, your life, you know. So Faith, I appreciate so much what you had to say about your mother too, because that kind of, those kinds of changes happen to us, to us all throughout the, the course of, of our life. So understanding and being patient and communicating and, and, you know, not, not trying to put up so much resistance that the change causes you to, uh, to impact other areas of, of your life, but knowing that you can get through it and the resiliency that you have talked about, you're, so you're, you're peeling away the layers of, of, the, of the onion to get to, to get to where you really need to be and have that work-life you know, balance and everything that, everything that happens to us can be done, I think, by choice. So we need to choose how we're gonna make the changes and how we're going to implement them smoothly. I love the word mobilize. To me, that has a really positive vibe for that, just to get a group together and tackle something. So I think that's a great way to look at change too. I mean, it's getting the whole group on board with them. That's great. I love that word. And then Faith, how about you? What's your, uh, your best advice? Uh, the best advice that I was given in, in relation to this was really just being authentically myself and being honest. 
So being comfortable with being vulnerable with the people that I was in charge of leading and saying to them, I'm just as uncertain and uncomfortable and anxious as you are about this, but I do have faith, no pun intended, um, in our abilities to get through this change. So we're going to be, we're a collective unit and we're going to get through it together. It's going to be rocky, but we've done it before. We're going to tackle it. We're going to be resilient and we're gonna come out on the other side of this better than when we started. Uh, because that's how we've always done. That's kind of my mantra to myself. So opening that part of myself up and saying that to them um, has always been that that was probably the best advice I've gotten just to be, you know, really authentically who I am at my core and bringing that into the times that we are going through change and how I've been able to get through it personally, bringing it into the workforce. Yeah, I love that. Authentic leadership, I think, is is another topic that we could probably talk about for a long time. So maybe I'll get this group back together to, to talk to our members about that at some point. Cause I think that that's so, so true. Showing up as your authentic self changes everything for your team. So one question in particular for you, Kelly. So along with this advice, what experience did you have with a leader leading you through change, whether it was good or bad that has helped guide your choices and how people can then, you know, think of ways to, to take what their leader is doing and turn that into their own change, resiliency, that kind of thing. Sorry, that's a long question. So. It's okay. Um, I have examples of bad leadership and good leadership, but in the spirit of positivity, I'll, I'll focus on good leadership. Um, so I know a lot of teams experience this, especially since COVID, and that is um, being possibly understaffed or just losing people to different jobs. I know that that's happening a lot. That certainly happened on my team. Um, in a past life, that also happened to my team. And I wasn't in a more senior leadership role at the time. I was a manager. Um, and so I had people working for me and there were other managers and the team who had people working for them. And a bunch of the managers left all around the same time. And so there was a lot of work that um, needed to be done and there just wasn't enough people to do it. And I was um, really concerned. I thought that more people would leave because of it. And at the time I was reporting to the the controller for the company and went and talked with her and just told her my concerns. And I really appreciated her bigger picture advice, which is more, she was more mentoring me, I think, on career aspirations and um, looking at what we do in this moment and how it can impact down the line. Um, so a lot of times when we're dealing with change management, we're focused on what's right in front of us, which of course we need to be and we should be. But um, her advice is advice that I now give to others, which is, um, is there anything that you can take on that you would find interesting that you know would help the team, but also would help you learn more so that down the line, it, it might help you with getting promoted or getting additional responsibilities or projects and turning it around into something positive for me and positive for my team. So I took that back to my team and we figured out what everybody would like, what likes to take in the spirit of learning and growing and um, eventually being able to advance because of it. And that certainly did play out for many of us. And so it was just a perspective change. And so that's what I try to focus on when I am faced with change with my team now is how can we look at a perspective and see if there's not a way to change that to be more positive for us. And that's not always possible, but it definitely worked for me then. And I, I try to give that advice. Even if people are asking me career advice, how do I move up? I say the same thing, like, is, is anyone leaving? Is anyone going on, on maternity leave? Could you take on additional work and learn something new and really just turning it into something positive? It really did make a difference. 
That's great. That's such a great way to look at it too and see any opportunities that are coming from change. And we didn't even scratch the surface on, on change opportunities. So I think that that's great. I also think your answers that you've given this whole session really show that that positive impact has, has come out in your leadership as well. So that's great. So I have one final question for all of you um, to close this out, just to kind of give some, some takeaways for our, our members watching and watching later on demand. So Faith, I'll start with you on this one. So what are some resources either for, um, for leaders, non-leaders, personal, anything that you've seen that has helped you work through change or whether you're really great at managing it or even need to continue to work on this skill? Sure. So I think Kelly and Andrea pointed out mentors. I think they are what sort of the number one resource. I know when I was younger in my career, that was where I went to kind of understand the larger picture about change. I think because to Kelly's point a little earlier, um, we think about change as the immediate thing that's happening to us and not the larger picture as it relates to an organization or a business. So I needed that um, I that that mindset because I could only think about what was right in front of me. Um, and the other thing was just um, sort of emotional awareness. And I think Andrea might have touched on this before. Understanding within yourself what's creating um, the anxiety or the negative emotions in relation to the change. Is it just because you think you can't control what's happening? You want to be able to have a sense of just norm, what we call normalcy, which I don't even know what that is anymore. Um, it, are those are the, is that the reason why you're having such a tough time with adjusting or being able to be adaptable to things that are constantly, constantly changing when in all actuality, things are changing around us all the time. So we are pretty good at it. I just think it's the big ones that get thrown in our face that just sort of throw us off key. So just being able to get into yourself and understanding what causes you to have those like really big negative reactions in relation to the change will help you kind of get over it for the next time that it happens. Perfect. Yeah. And if you, anyone watching now or on demand needs help figuring out how to find a mentor, April 6th will be your session for that. <laughs> so Andrea, how about you? Any resources that you think would be helpful for people to, to continue to grow in this space? I think so. So I've read, um, I love to read and a couple of books that I would, I wouldn't mind sharing with, I think that are important, whether it's, you know, corporate change or a personal change, Two, two of them come to my mind. The first one is the, the culture code. And then the next one is the talent code. Both of them are written by author Daniel Cole, who really explains like your, your own culture, not just meaning where you're from in terms of culture, but your talent culture, you know, how to grow within um, a set of uh, skills and resources that you might already possess, but you don't know how to have them recognized. And I also think that, I know we talked a little bit previously about the self-assessments, but I think those are good, you know, continually to assess who you are and then um, grow from there. So so whatever your skill set is, make sure like Faith was saying, like there's a lot of opportunity that you may not even see in your current position, but maybe something that can move laterally across the company with, with those skill sets that you have. So I think it's important that, that you talk to your mentors. I think the Women Alliance obviously is a great place for, for us to go to hone our skills and also to learn and grow about what we do within workers' comp, but also talk to your, your manager about projects and things that you think you would, you would like to, to tackle because that is really important, becoming a little bit more, you know, boisterous about your goals and about, you know, opportunities. Those, those things are, are wonderful. There's also one other book that I really love, and it's um, called Driving Excellence, which is, which is a, a, a great book, too. It's kind of a, a older book, but it's, it's actually a, a, a really good book about how to take your skills and, and sharpen them and move yourself to, to like higher levels of where you, where you want to be. That's great. I also love reading. So I'm going to keep those in mind, but we also have talked about within the Alliance, um, putting a resource page where people can go back and see anything that's been mentioned by our panelists and whether it's 
books, podcasts, you know, anything like that. So, so those are great. So we'll be coming back to you to get the, uh, the titles and things and we're ready for that. So, and Kelly, how about you? Any resources that you can think of? Um, similar to Faith, I would certainly say mentors, um, friends, anyone who you respect, who you see modeling what, what you would like to do and what you would like to be is certainly important. But I'll also just su suggest some unconventional items as well. So um, we all know what it's like to be super hungry and then you become hangry, or maybe that's just me, but um, I think, and my husband, he's definitely like that. Um, or if you just haven't gotten a lot of sleep this week, and then you're way more irritable when your kids try to ask you something or when you get an email that you're frustrated with. And I think making sure that you are taking care of yourself will give you more patience when these obstacles come to you at work. So my team will call me a hypocrite because I'm going to say you should get a lot of rest and they know that I don't really sleep a lot. But um, I do think that all of the measures that you need to take to take care of yourself will put you in a better position to be to, to be able to handle the transition better. And I also think we all need to give ourselves and others a little more grace. Everybody has stuff going on. And some days people are gonna be great at, at being able to manage your change. And some days they're just not. And understanding that, you know, I just, I need to take a break today or I can't really talk about this today. And doing that for yourself. And if you're a people leader, making sure to do that for them. If you can just tell that they're not in a good place, don't press them to have that conversation on that particular day. Let it be and go back to it when it looks like they're feeling a little bit better. So um, I know that's not really tangible resources, but there are plenty of resources out there to, to give you some tools on how, how do you get more rest? How, how do you take care of your emotional intelligence and, and making sure that you're showing up in a way to work that's gonna take care of yourself? Yeah, and I actually just recently discovered the podcast, Nothing Much Happens. So that could be a tangible resource to, to tie on to yours, Kelly, that if you turn that on, you will be asleep within minutes. It is. <laughs> so, um, and love, love the un unconventional resources always. Uh, we do have one uh, comment in here. I'm just going to read to close this out. So it's also a culture of openness to change. Paraphrase from Charles Darwin. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent but the one most receptive to change. So thank you, Stacy. I can't, th I don't even know how to close this now because it can't be better than what Stacy just said, but I will close it by saying thank you so much to the three of you for joining today on a topic this important and this prevalent. We're never done learning. We're never done talking about it. So I just having you three here has just been so, so gratifying for me personally. And I know our members also are going to get so much out of this. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. For our members who attended live today, tell your friends, this is going to be on demand on the Alliance website. So you can go back and watch and share the link. And I hope everyone else has a great rest of your day. Thank you again to you three very much. Thank you. Thank you.